strung the hits alive. The way he struck my back, cause he shot high. Even when I was very, very young, I um, wanted to be a singer. But it's one of these things where we don't have a lot of role models for singers um, or for artists in general. We sort of see people who are stars, who feel like they're totally in uh, an unreachable place, or we see people who are um, really not or, or, or then there's that other archetype of the artist who's really struggling. Um, but there's nothing in between. Like, what does it mean to be an artist in the world? And I didn't know. And so part of not knowing was not knowing how to become one. How do you be a singer? What does that mean? What does your daily life look like? What skills do you need um, besides the simple act of communicating with your voice? One, two, one, two, three, four.
actual music speaks for itself, but what's hard is talking about the music, you know? <laughs> it's like people, you know, even to this day when people ask me, what kind of music do you make? I, I pause and I hesitate. Um, and it ends up being a sentence um, rather than a single word, you know, or maybe even a couple of sentences um, because there are so many different influences that come into the music. I write on a nylon string guitar and the lyrics are important, so that kind of puts me in a songwriting, in the songwriter tradition, uh, the American songwriter tradition, and I play with jazz musicians who are great improvisers, and that kind of puts me in the jazz context, and then I play music from Ethiopia and sometimes write in Amharic, and that kind of brings me in that, and so the, it's hard to talk about it, but when you hear it, your ears answer the question for themselves. for two weeks um, and it was with this band that I played with here today um, and it was incredible I mean going to Ethiopia for me is like a touchstone I need to go there once a year um, because you get you get a whole different sense of priority and you get a different sense of um, learning and what's possible with music when you go there also and so it was really a crazy, I mean, in some ways it was a crazy experience. We played 10 shows. Um, we played everywhere from an orphanage for HIV positive kids to clubs in Addis Ababa to the town square of the city in the east called Harar to, we played at the foot of the ancient castles in Gondor, which was like a dream, 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 dream come true. Um, so we just had a lot of experiences. After Ethiopia, we spent a, a week in Kenya as well, a week in Nairobi. Um, that's a place I've been before and played before, and actually also a place I feel really culturally close to. One, two, three, four. The way the people stitch themselves together are happening slow, slow, oh, slow. The way the people stitch themselves together are happening slow, slow, oh, slow. So give me all the clocks in your house. We can go. Second hand, break the magnet. 
There was a very distinct moment. It was 2007, um, and I was still the director, one of the directors of the Red Poppy Art House at that time. And I had a show there. Um, and I just sent out one email to my list, just as I had normally done for shows. But instead of the typical 40 or 50 people coming to the show, there was a line around the block, and I didn't know anyone in the audience. Whereas beforehand, the shows were usually mostly my friends. At that moment, I didn't know anybody in the audience. And I thought to myself, how do they know about this show? What brought them here? And then it was a click, and I realized, oh, I can really do this. I can really do this in my life. And that was the epiphany moment for me. Thank you. 
tragic world The cave where I was born Tell me under poetry A million pages torn Let the words wash over me The words my soul will keep In my sleep, in my sleep In my sleep, in my sleep In my sleep So we arrived in Gondor not knowing if the shows we were going to do were going to happen. And we ended up playing two shows in Gondor. The first show was on a rooftop and it was like a house party with a hundred Ethiopians. And again, it's like playing Abai Mado, the song that we played today at the very end. Um, people were just going crazy and it was like nothing I'd ever seen. Anyway, they told all their friends and they told all their friends and the next night we ended up having a show at the foot of the castle. The whole day was raining torrentially. We were there right at the beginning of the rainy season. Torrential, torrential rain. Um, and all the electricity went out. Of course, without electricity, there's no way to power a sound system. And if you're gonna play outside, to hundreds and hundreds of people, you need sound. So we thought, okay, this is not gonna happen. Uh, there's no way, it's raining, there's no electricity, nothing. So we spent the day more or less just playing in the hotel lobby and playing, just playing music there. Um, and then about an hour and a half after we were supposed to go on, the lights came back and the rain stopped, just like that. And we rushed to the castle where the crew with the sound system was already setting up. We jumped in, started sound check, and the sound check brought the people. The music itself brought the people, and suddenly, within half an hour, there were 300 people there waiting for us to play. And we played, and it was epic. And at one point during the show itself, the lights went out, and people actually started driving their cars to the stage to light the stage with their headlights. And then just like that, the music came on, everyone roared, and we kept playing. And it was the most special moment of the whole trip. One, two, three, four. Strong the it's alive. The way he struck my back, cause he's shy sometimes. I asked him to dance, but he won't dance. No, he don't know he is a beautiful Lord. He pulled back the veil and showed the color of his heart. But yes, I know you're leaving soon. Well, baby, now don't come so close, y'all. Leaving soon, leaving soon, uh, baby, now don't come so close, y'all. Leaving soon. You take me to the roof and show me the moon.
me to the roof and show me the moon here for tonight. And there we lay with my guitar and play. Your fingertips, they remind me of the moon. Well, time had passed quickly. is like the world is full of its own spheres and I think one of the things that I love about my life is the ability to jump from situation to situation and learn from them all um, the last show we played was at a hotel in Nairobi Kenya um, and then the next show we played was at Google in a way it doesn't make sense and in a way it makes perfect sense there's this kind of crossing over that happens when you travel. And there's a kind of crossing over that happens in the music itself. And that's related. And so the sort of, getting back to your question from before, the sort of different influences come from that's what our lives are like. And so that's what the music is like too. Around you, no more gravity, no more gravity. 
Johnson on the trumpet, Daryl Green on the drum kit, Evan Flory Barnes on the upright bass. My name is Maklit Haderil. Thank you so much for coming to this show.